This is Kev Dog, and you're watching Bitchin' Rides Done Right. Duh. Hello, friends. I'm Larry, and I'm at the Portland Roadster Show, and I've got a fun guest that gets to be on TV with somebody cool, and he's pretty cool. His name is Kevin Sheely. Kevin. <laughs> hey. Welcome. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. This is Rides Done Right with Kevin Sheely. <laughs> so, I don't even know where to start. How do you even start with you? So, let's start at the beginning. I, I want to go back to, you know, the your, your, let's talk about you being a kid and coming up, because we did that with yeah. Dave. Mm -hmm. what, what did you like and what drew you to, to the event that then became the meeting of, of Dave? Oh, you know, growing up as a kid, you know, my dad... My, my dad and my grandfather, they weren't really into custom cars, but they were into cars as the fact as my dad washed his car every week, no matter if it was hailing, snowing, or everything. Changed his oil religiously 3,000 miles in his garage. I helped him, you know, and then I got my first car, skipping ahead, you know, so I kind of grew up in that. I would let my sister wash a, a van with a rock, and I let her do it. And she got in deep trouble. <laughs> I was like this. Yep, you're going to get in deep trouble. But, you know forward ahead you know i get my first car and it was a crappy honda accord hatchback the only thing i could afford at the time and i had a uh, auto body class and i started shaving handles off and i came home i'll never forget it i came home and my dad said where are the handles on your car and i said i shaved them off and then it just kind of snowballed from there i mean i ripped the springs out i painted it all custom and that was my first car and that was kind of my first experience in the whole sh the whole show car scene and, you know, I didn't have a ton of money growing up. I just always wanted to do the very best I could do with the resources that I had. And that's just that just kind of drove me through the whole thing. And, you know, I built a bunch of trucks for myself, you know, that had been in magazines, you know, before and after I met Dave. And like I said, that was just one of the things. I always just wanted to make it my very best. And, you know, it kind of carries over to the same today. You know, when I set these cars up here, I don't have to spend hours and hours underneath them. But... I want to make them the, the very best they are for this show. You know, mm -hmm. so that's just kind of carried over. And mm -hmm. That's kind of where it all came from. So, How did you, uh, you know, doing this, how did you run into Dave then? I mean, were you, you, you were doing your customizing. Did you, like, see him at a car show someplace? Or? Well, you know, we had met at a couple car shows, and then, uh, you know, I needed a job. And he was, he was actually offering a job at HPC, kind of a lower-grade lower, lower grade job, just blasting parts. And it was funny, I showed up for the job interview and he had another guy there and he's like, we're going to work you both for a week and see which one's better. So I thought, okay, this is my time to shine. I'm just going to do whatever it takes. I'm just going to work my ass off and, and just see what happens. And I ended up getting the job and then I ended up doing all the positions and, you know, kind of learning the company and seeing a little bit more of the automotive world. I mean, because we were, we were coating headers for top field dragsters and pistons for race cars. I mean... So that really kind of drove that whole thing too, and it was another whole aspect of, you know, I was super young, another whole aspect of the automotive industry I had no idea about, so. So you meet Dave Kendig, you get this this job, you're working with him like a couple of years, wasn't it? Yeah, Before, it was a couple of years as an HBC, I think two or three years. You I gotta recant the story that yep. then led to all of a sudden he goes and starts his shop, he leaves, you're you're still there now. Yeah. Well, what happened, how'd that go? Now this is how did it go in Kevin's <laughs> view. <laughs> well, like I said, is, you know, how it goes is he, he ended up cashing out his 401k for I think just a little over 4,500 bucks or something like that and start this really cool shop. And I mean, he was working on cool cars and I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted, I mean, that's the kind of stuff that was important to me. And I was a kid. I mean, every single dime that I had went into cars. I mean, it, I just lived and breathed it. I wasn't married. I just wanted to be around cars the most I could. So I would just start helping him. And next thing you know, he's paying me to lower cars. They're paying me to handle suspensions on cars. And that was kind of more my specialty, you know, frames and suspensions and welding, like heavy welding and stuff like that. And, you know, then he would take it kind of over and do the, artsy stuff that he did and it was amazing because I was like you know there's no other vehicles like this around and and like like he said you know uh, I was working I changed my schedule a little bit so I could still do Dave's deal in the morning and help him with all the cars and the stuff that he needed to get done and I showed up to work 15 minutes late and the big main boss I don't really think liked me he was kind of a it's kind of a super conservative I guess you can say you know and I'm a wild kid just wanting to be all about cars and and I remember I'll never forget the day I put my mask on I was a sprayer at the time when I was actually spraying the coatings 
and uh, I put my mask on and I started spraying a header and I got tapped on the shoulder and the guy said, or the manager at the time after Dave left said, you know, the main guy doesn't want you here anymore. And I was like, that's fine. And I took my, and I hung it back up in the booth. I called Dave because my truck was actually in the shop getting worked on for some engine problems it had. And I called Dave and he was just barely getting on the freeway and he spun around and came and picked me back up and we just started working since then, you know. And like I said, it all started in his garage and then we moved to 4,500 square feet and then 9,000 and then we just kept adding, adding and now we have the entire building and all these guys to watch over and it's just, it's like I said, it's a total dream come true. So when you started in his garage, we already know the kind of things you were doing. Was there anybody else in there? So there was there was Dave, you, and was there like and there was Mike, and the Mike was a, like a, a, a very, very, very good painter that Dave kind of you know uh, talked to, and he was kind of done with what he was doing, and he was an incredible painter, and that was kind of how it is. You know, Dave could lay the graphics out, Mike could paint them really good, and I was kind of doing the suspension, and a little you know a little bit of sheet metal work and stuff like that, and it just kind of went from there. You and know? people hear about that and they go, "Man, you guys are doing some stuff." Yeah, and it, I mean, like I said, in the graphics that just came out of Dave's mind. I mean, I used to question it all the time. Like, are you sure we're going to paint this engine said color? Are you sure? And then you know, and it's all put together. They turn out amazing every time. So I've had, I just, I've learned to just hold my tongue and just roll with it it's when it comes to colors with Dave. <laughs> One of the things that I'm finding really interesting, we all, we all know this about you, you're not a shop foreman for Dave Kindig for no reason. You, you, you know, it, it's funny how the show goes. We get to see all, they, the reality is you can only put so much Kev Dog in a yeah, show. Right, right. So they put all the fun, <laughs> cool stuff in and they got to do that. Yeah. But we don't really get to see any of the work and it's like they almost edit out just to make sure wait a second don't, and I heard you just a second ago I was like over there sounding unkev dog like on the phone <laughs> you know you got a problem you got to do this you got to do that yep. you're a real working foreman who yeah. earned what it is that you have well yeah and then that's and that's the whole thing you know I get a lot of that I can't believe you're working I can't believe you're working you know I'm the guy that shows up at nine and I don't leave until nine nine to nine and the camera crew goes home at five with all the rest of the other guys and, you know, and I'm going through the shop and making lists or straightening something out that I don't like to see or leaving notes, making sure we have parts for everything. And there's just so many guys and so many cars that we're taking care of. You know, and I just I kind of feel like the firefighter. You know, I just kind of and I've always just had this mentality and, and you just have to do what it takes to get the job done. You know, these customers are paying a lot of money for these cars. They expect them to be done at a certain time. And we promise them that they're going to be done at a certain time. And we promise them they're going to be a car of you know that gratitude or built at that level not just some crap we threw together at the last minute we we're going to have our names on these cars that we wanted to be as perfect as we can make them do we make mistakes all the time all the time everybody does mm -hmm. so how uh, how do you find the scheduling because when we've watched other shows uh like boyd coddington that you know it's all coming up you always saw them come up with these crazy oh got to build a car in two months and stuff and it was unrealistic we all knew the timelines were horrible and the good news I like about your show is you guys never have to fight with that. We get to see parts of that build through, you know, yeah. how, how do you find scheduling with it? Oh, with you know, it's, it's just taken, it's, it's been a really, really, really hard struggle and it's taken a lot of time. So we just, you know, we look at the hours and we average amount and we kind of give each department those that amount of hours. And with as many guys as working on them, we can kind of give the customer an idea of when we think it's going to be done. Obviously, it takes as long as it takes. We don't build a car in a week. We don't build a car in six months. You know, our full builds that we do take anywhere from nine to 12 months, without a doubt. If we're going all the way down, all the way through the whole car, it's going to be nine to 12 months. Mm -hmm. You know, and the bigger cars take full 12 months. Mm -hmm. You know, a Camaro that, you know, and no offense to the Camaro guys, a Camaro you can build out of a catalog, mm -hmm. just like a 32. Those kind of cars are a little bit quicker because you don't have to hand fab everything but when you get into Invictas or Cadillacs and stuff that you just can't find parts for or you you have to make them and that takes time you know my guy spends eight hours making a headlight bucket that's eight hours that I still have to have this car done you know what I'm saying yeah. so when you uh, when you guys are putting together this great crew that you have I, I'm assuming that I could envision you and, and Dave sitting there looking for guys and saying let's get this guy or in the interview process with, oh yeah did were you in really involved with the bulk of that crew as they came together how did that work you know it's really you know dave would find some of them i would find some of them and it would be one of those things that 
you know, we always bring a guy in for a week. No, no promises. You know, you don't have the job yet, but come in for a week and work. And that, and that takes care of a lot of things. Anybody can talk. Anybody can say that they do all this great work for one. Well, you got to make sure you're able to do what you say. And then almost more importantly than that is you have to jive with the rest of the crew. Mm -hmm. And you have to jive with Dave and you have to be, you know, be open to that kind of stuff because it, I can have the most talented guy in there, but if he's not jiving with the rest of the crew, it's just a bad seat and it will just rot through the whole shop. So we really have to be careful because we have such a great crew. We have such a great family almost. And we really just want to take care of everybody. So. Do you uh, take a, a swing at him in that week where you throw a little Kev dog rip on him and see how they are going to handle it? And, <laughs> and do you play serious until you let them off the hook? Oh, or how yeah. does that go? Yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, we get, you want to make sure that these guys can handle kind of anything. And, you know, we joke around a lot and you've got to have thick skin. I have a shop full of 20 artists with big egos, as they should have. And you have to be able to roll with some punches every now and then. You got to be able to take it, and you got to be able to give it out at the same time, you know. So Will was pretty a pretty early hire for you guys, wasn't he? Yeah. I think he's been one that's been working with you guys mm -hmm, for a while. Mm -hmm. Will was, you know, Will is so amazing, and he has taught me so much. That dude is so smart when it comes to anything. You know, if there's something tricky that I need to work, one I just have to talk to one guy, and he can make it happen. I mean, he is so smart. And he has taught me so much, you know, back when the shop was a lot smaller and I didn't have as many people to manage and I was actually in the shop all day long working. That guy just taught me so much. I mean, it was a, just a pleasure and an honor to work with him. I, I mean, he really made me the builder that I am, you know, because I mean, I was just a punk kid that knew how to weld pretty good and put chassis together, you know, and, but he's the guy that really brought the science into it. Is this going to work? Is this going to be longevity? You know, and it just makes our cars that much better. You know, so you came with the uh, small truck. You dialed those things in. Where is Kev Dog now with his personal stable? What What do we got cooking in the in the, that you currently have, and and then maybe dreaming up? Well, so I so the black truck that was on the show I sold, and I pretty much sell everything that I build because I get bored. I build them. And that's the fun part for me. And then I'll drive them a little bit, and then next thing you know, there's a for sale sign in it, and I just hear everybody in the shop, oh, you're selling it again, huh? Well, I just like to build them. So I sold my black truck, I built a Dodge pickup truck for myself to pull my boat around, a diesel, and it has air ride, and it sits right down. And, and I'm just holding out, I really want a 55 post. It's my dream car, cool. and I love those cars, and I just want to do it the way, I mean, I really like the cars as low as they can go that's just my style and i know how much it costs to build them the way i want to so i'm just slowly saving some parts and saving some money and when the time comes i'll i'll put one together what so colors probably black with red interior just solid black i mean i really like that i i hate taking care of it but i love the way it looks <laughs> <laughs> so you are uh, oh i i gotta i gotta feed into that a little bit what do you think about the idea when it's time to sell your car and you get to you get to also throw a little kev dog in there they come in now the price it seems like it'd be easy to sell a car it's like yeah i know it's a little bit high but you know there is the kev dog inflation that you know now i can buy a car from you and so see i think everyone's gonna get mad at you because i don't <laughs> i don't look at it that way i just look at it as like i just want to get rid of this truck so i can build another one like i'm not trying to you know i don't do that but now that you brought it up <laughs> taxation without representation I'm, I'm thinking i'm thinking that, that that's what i'd be doing i'd be if you and i are pals it's like i'm saying come over you know let's autograph get a photo now all of a sudden i get the price i want because you showed up i'd be using the crap out of you. so do you find any of the the guys in there playing that little you know celebrity favorite because real why not i mean you yeah, guys are yeah. really cool about stuff you know not i mean not too much i mean like i said at the end of the day we're just normal guys. I mean, and until my face ends up on a toy box or something, will it maybe even hit me that I'm anything different than just a hard-working hot rod builder? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I just and I want to keep it that way because I don't want to be somebody different. I just want to be Kev Dog, and I just want to do what Kev Dog does. You do you know? got a bobblehead yet? I really would really like a bobblehead. So if anybody watching this, please send me a Kev Dog bobblehead, and you just have the hat with the ears tucked in. And then you can put me in any stance you want. And as long as the head moves, I'll put it on a dashboard. I'll put it in my office. I'll put it wherever you want. That's well, not wherever, but... <laughs> 
That's got to have. I mean, I was surprised. I, I asked the question. And I thought, certainly, the first character coming out of there, that's the guy going on the shelf. It's like, yeah. And and what you got to do is, when it happens, we got to make it the Kev dog bobblehead, and then we got to have a Dave uh, bobblehead, and let's figure out. Who's selling the best? Right, right. You know? <laughs> we'll make a statement here. You know? And then that's funny because we have that 3D printer, and I've been trying to get Will to just print me one, but it ha we've been so busy it just hasn't happened. That should be your like <laughs> like one of your show deals is what you do is you take, you guys got five or ten characters. You can do the whole 26 or whatever you yeah, got yeah. and say we're putting them all online and we're going to see who wins out. That's just, <laughs> you push that because I, I got a feeling I work on you that. could even put a little skin on that one. <laughs> Yeah, that'll be some fun. So, yeah. so, you're also known for the whole driving thing. I mean, you know, when it comes time to go drive the cars, you guys always have the whole fun thing that says, you know, well, Dave's, you know, I'm driving it. And sometimes you get a win out, but you are the you are the driver down there. You're the guy who, who wheels it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I get to take, and, and that's a, you know, that's a huge opportunity for me too. I mean, I some people may look at it as work, but I love coming to these places. I love meeting people. I love bringing these cars out and setting them up. I mean, it's just a passion. I just love it. You know, so we load the cars up and I get to drive across country. I get to have a little alone time to myself and just think and think about the projects, think about the shop, think about my life, you know, because, you know, you get so busy in life and so busy with everything going on. It's just nice to sit in that cab and drive and enjoy yourself a little bit. What was that big red liner th the, the call, called? The big red bus thing? Oh, the future liner. The future liner. The future liner. That is the, the one vehicle to me, I'm guessing, that when it came time for Dave to say, no, I'm driving it, no, you're driving I bet he didn't even fight yeah, you on it. Yeah, he just yeah. said, you go take it out, man. Yeah. Yeah, Wasn't Dave, that scary? You were in traffic with that thing right off the bat. Yeah, you know what? It was a little it was a little nerve-wracking because for, there's a, for a couple reasons. It was hard to steer. It was really hard to steer. And it, it even has a hydraulic assist from the factory, and it's back on, and it's working. But those with double wheels in the front, it just will not turn. It will not turn at all. And it only goes about 38 miles an hour. So we're driving it down state to go to the, the, to the reveal and it's taken forever. And then so, and then the third, is people are driving with their cell phones out the windows, coming into my lane. And I'm just trying to get this big motor home looking thing to Murray Park, which is a park right by the shop. So they can do this reveal. I mean, and I have people passing and getting off the side of the road and getting out of their car and taking pictures. I felt like I was in a parade and it was like a Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> but you know, Dave, didn't, Dave did not fight me at all. I don't think, he doesn't really want anything to do with the bigger things. He just wants to kind of have his little sports cars, and which is fine. So, who, who drove it then home? So you got it in there. We did the whole thing where the guys come over and they reveal it. Then somebody's got to take it to the next des destination. Oh, who yeah, that, did that? That was me. That was Again, me. Yeah, yeah. It's like hop in it now, take uh, yeah, it. Yeah. Shows over. Yeah. Drive it home. Yeah. Man, that actually carries over to the big old transport deal. Yeah. So you yeah. actually drive the transport yep. thing. Uh -huh. I drive the transport, and like I said, it's so here's the story for the show. I pull up to the to the gate here, day day of the show where everybody's loading, and I got I, I come in to have to navigate my Escalade and trailer through the cars that are in here, and I'm whining about how I got to get in here, and the the show gal says, "Well, Dave Kindig's crew came in with their transporter and they backed it in here like a boss." <laughs> It's like, I've had really? a lot of practice. That's my introduction. It's like real. I mean, I'm here for those guys, but really, they kicked me right off the bat. It's like okay, but then and, and so then I'm I'm hearing Dave Kindig's crew, and I'm going, wow, Dave Kindig did that. I go tell Dave that, and he's like, that was Kev Dog who did that. He he jumped right on and gave you the credit. But. Oh, well, that's good. That's good because like I said, if he wants to drive it, he's more than welcome. But I don't think. I mean, like I said, I enjoy it. I come from a a family of. Pretty much everybody was a truck driver in one way or another. So, I mean, I really just get a kick out of just jumping in the cab and, and, and enjoying it, enjoying the road. So, what, what's, uh, what's next is, you know, we're going to forecast that you guys are going to, it's still going, great things are happening. When you look out there next, what do you see as being the next kind of cool thing you want? We always kind of put the little, the little, I kind of want to get this or I want to get that. What do you, you got a couple of things? You know, who knows? I just want to just keep doing what we're doing. You know, I don't know. I mean, and I'm like I said, I'm along for the ride, and I'm a guy that keeps his expectations way down. And I just, like I said, I, do, I give a hundred every day or a hundred plus every day, and whatever happens, happens. And I'll just be excited just to go along the ride. I mean, we're we're finishing out some incredible builds this year, 
just over the top. My guys are killing it like they always do. And I'm just really excited to you know get back and finish these things up and just kind of move on from there and see what next great project it is. What I would really like to do, and we haven't had the opportunity yet, we will, I'm sure, is I want to build a Riddler car. And when we and we get the right customer and the right opportunity, we're gonna go to we're gonna go and and, and handle it. You saw a couple here. I mean, oh, they're yeah, right they're, they're right beautiful. down the street, and they are beautiful. And and when I look at those, they're your guys kind of cars. Yeah. I mean, especially especially that Riviera. When I see oh, yeah. that Riviera, it's like I see a lot of theme stuff that would come right out of you guys. Because yeah. that guy went he went yeah. all the way oh, with yeah. that car. Yeah. And can you believe that was one guy? Oh yeah, yeah. JF, Driving that, yeah, whole, JF. Holy smokes, that blew me away. Yeah, so yeah. you see that, and you guys go, "Let's go do it," and we, you'll get a chance. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, we're just waiting for the right opportunity. That's what Dave says. You know, we're just gonna wait. We we don't want to. We're not trying to force it. We just let it be. You know what I'm saying? And that's always just kind of worked for us. Is you know, we go and work hard and do do our thing and. It just kind of unfolds into a beautiful flower, I guess you could say. So. And you guys got picked up for another season then on uh, Velocity? Yeah, we're that... doing. We're filming season three right as we speak, um, and that will air in September. And I believe we're doing another Beyond Bitchin in in the middle. I think that right. came out like in June or yeah. July where me and Dave kind of We needed that, off. by the way. Yeah, right? <laughs> my, my wife's getting tired of seeing <laughs> me watch the same show over and over. And I watch it, and then three hours later it's on again. I'm still watching the same thing again. She goes, "Man, it's really you know we saw we know how it ends, right? You know? it's like, <gasps> they finish the car, <laughs> so we're ready for another season. Sweet, right? That'll yeah. be fun. Uh, one of the things that we're going to do in, in closing is we're, we'll close the interview, but we're going to get to go out and play and see your toy transporter that you got nice. and give us a little inside to it. So uh, I think we'll leave it at that oh, and, cool. and go see him. So thanks Let's for thanks no for coming worries. out. It was my pleasure. My Thank pleasure. you so much. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.